What is up guys, Joe Snow right here. So in today's video, we're going to discuss about two important things. The first one being the iOS 9.3.5 and iOS 9.3.4 jailbreak development. And the second one in the second part of the video, we're going to discuss about downgrading back to Tempo 1.1 to iOS 10.1.1 using the saved SHSH tickets or blobs. And I'm going to show you how to verify if they're valid or not, because some of them got invalidated due to some flaws in a program we used to save in, in, uh, in the past. So let's see uh, what's going on. We're going to start with the iOS 9.x jailbreak. And I want to I want to point it out your attention to Fried Apple team. They seem to be involved in developing sort of jailbreak on iOS 9.3.5 and um, iOS 9.3.4. They don't have some conclusive work for the moment, but they do know what they're talking about. And they seem to also work with Look at the Disco at some um, some point. And this guy right here, Max uh, Basil Basley, I think this is how you pronounce your name. Uh, sorry if I misspell it. Actually is a part of the team. And as you can see, he is uh, actually working on the 9.3.x jailbreak and will require full KPP bypass to work on 9.3.4 and 9.3.5, which hints of the fact that they are working on this site. Now, I don't know if they're working on a uh, jailbreak for the 32-bit devices as well, but most likely it will uh, support them as most of the things in here hints the fact that it will support the... Um, the 32-bit devices, but the Fried Apple team, the team it, uh, itself, containing three members, are actually focused a little bit on uh, dumping the kernel, on getting to hack on it, and so on. And the fact that they're actually at least in good relationship with Look at the Desco is a big up because it means that they might be legit. So they're not releasing anything for the moment, but we know they're working on it. And um, as you can see, they're trying to uh, get either task for PID, you probably remember it from my uh, other videos, it's a special port on the kernel. On iOS 9.3.4, they demoed a couple of jailbreaks uh, for the uh, 8.4.1 and 9.3.2 at some point. They're developing, which is something interesting, and they also say that they got iOS 9.3.4 Cydia working, which is something good, if you ask me. So let's just keep focused a little bit on, it, on them, and if you still have a device running iOS 9.3.5, and yeah, you're not all broken, of course, just, just don't update it. I mean, if it's an iPhone 5 or an iPhone uh, 5C and so on, because iPhone 4S cannot be updated past to 9.3.5. So uh, th yeah, they're, they're very interesting to, uh, to look at. Probably they're going to release something or probably they're not, but at least they are doing something for the 9.3.5. They're fiddling with the kernel, which means that they might find something at some point, as they did with the um, task for PID, which is good. Let's continue to the second thing we're going to discuss, and it's important, very important if you ever want to, to downgrade. But first, if you want to learn more about the iOS 9.3.4 jailbreak I'm talking about, it's here, I have a video on it. Uh, you can use it to jailbreak your uh, 9.3.5, sorry, 9.3.4 device. And some people actually got a downgrade of the iPhone 4S back to iOS 6.1.3 from, from 9.3.4 using this jailbreak. So it's basically good. You're going to have these links in the description down below. Definitely some kind of development available for 32-bit devices as well. So now let's switch gears directly to the uh, blobs. Very important and why you should check them in order to know whether they are valid or not. Because if they are not, you're going to have a hard time trying to restore and you won't be able to do so. But let me show you how you do it. Uh, at first, I'm going to need to go to my work directory. Uh, alrighty. And I, I have in here everything that is required for me in order to, to actually downgrade. And what you need is the IPSW, of course, from which you're going to extract a build manifest that I already did it in here. And you also need the basement and the SEP for the um, iOS 10.2. But we're not going to downgrade. I want to check out whether the blobs are valid. The blobs are in here, as you can see, and they're SHSH or SHSH2, depends on the format. Uh, both formats are accepted if they're saved with the same tool. And we also need an additional tool called EMG4 tool for Mac OS in this case, but it's also available for Windows. So you can do this on Windows with no problem. I switched on the Mac because the quality of the audio sounds better for some reason when I'm recording on a Mac. Right. 
So what we're going to do is to go to terminal and we're going to get access over these files. As you can see, it's not an executable, we cannot use it. And so we need to get access to it first, which means I need to sudo and ch mode 755 s s 55 in here. And I'm going to drag the Mac OS file. You need to do this as well when you download it in order to gain permissions on the file. If you have a password, you need to insert it. Uh, the password won't be shown. You just need to type enter. Oops, I did it right, wrong. Now it's good. And as you can see, it transformed the tool in an executable that you can actually run on your Mac. I'm going to drop it in here in my main folder and go to terminal back again. I'm going to call it and it uses a parameter V for verification. You need to insert it. Either way, it will do a completely different thing. Now we're going to drag the build manifest file. If you don't have the build manifest file, you need to get the IPSW for the version you want to check or for the version you want to downgrade, in my case, tempo one uh, and rename it as zip like this. You zip and double click to start extracting it and it will start extracting on, the, uh, on a folder and in that folder you will have, among the others, the build manifest plist but I already have it in here, so I will shorten the tutorial. Then you need to write, let, let a space and write dash s and get your blob. Uh, I'm going to get this one because I think it's the one for my iPhone 6 and I'm going to drop it in here. Let me check, uh, error reading file. So I got a problem. See, the blobs that I tried to verify were saved with ticket box application right here, not with TSS checker like this one from here which means that I cannot verify them with IMG4 tool because it's simply a different format. So I decided to take a blob saved with the um, TSS checker by Timstar and it's a blob for iPhone 6 running iOS 10.1.1 but I ran in another problem now. The build manifest and the IPSW that I had from which I took the build manifest is iPhone 6 10.1.1 but it's 14B150 not 100 like the blob is. So checking it with this IPSW and that build manifest will result in an error. So if if you do that you will get errors and you will think that the blob is not valid. So make sure you download the IPSW specific for the version in here. So what I did was to go ahead on the iPhone wiki right here took the iPhone 6 IPSW link and put it in wubzip.com or sorry, .org and it will simply open the IPSW as a zip file. It will take up to five minutes to do so. If you're on Windows, you can use Far Firmware Manager, it's faster. But I was able to download the build manifest for, the, um, for this IPSW faster than if I had to download the whole file, even though I will need to do that because the, the one I have, it's not valid. Now, when you're going to download it, it will tell you that the file is uh, dangerous. It no longer tells me because I skipped that. So do not worry. It's not actually dangerous. It's your file that you uploaded. No problem. Google simply can't get their facts right. Now, let's see if the verification works. Well, you're going to need to call again the EMG tool 4 with V. And the build manifest is the build manifest not from this IPSW, is the one that I downloaded for 14B100. And I'm going to paste it. Then I'm going to load the blob that I saved for, for this. And let's see if everything works as it should. There we go. So it says that the uh, IM4M is valid for the given build manifest for the following restore. Now, this is a tricky part. Make sure it's your device. So it says um, 14B100, which is Butler, FDR support, yes, and device class is this one. We're going to need this. And um, as you can see, it says file is valid. So there we go. Now, what happens if you check with the wrong IPSW? It will say file is valid, but here it will say that it won't work with any uh, any hashes from the build manifest. If you get that error, it's not a problem with your file, with your blob, it's a problem with the IPSW not matching. So why is it important to check these, sorry, these right now, in order to see if it's really your device. We're going to go back to the iPhone wiki, the link is in the description, and I'm going to simply paste N61AP to see what it is. So N61AP turns out this is an iPhone 6, which is good. The blob means it's valid. So I can restore the iPhone 6 with that, but I, I can only restore the 14B100. You probably remember that iOS 10 
10.1.1. Sorry, was split in two files. iPhone 6 has iOS 10.1.1 for both 14B100 and 14B150. You need to download the appropriate one. Either way, it will fail. So this is it guys, as you can see, this is how you check your blobs. I really hope this helps you. Make sure you actually verify your blobs and keep them safe. If they turn out to have errors, tell me in the comment section down below. Do not throw them away. We might be able to fix the issue. So this is it. Do not forget to subscribe to stay updated. Give this video a thumb up and peace out.